What is up everyone? This is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2 and we're going to be learning something new today. We are going to be learning why primary keys should never change. So with the database structure we've been using, we've had a user table that has a username column that is referenced by other tables. But it's important that nobody updates their username. Why is this? That's essentially what I'm going to try to answer in this video. First off, what does happen if you have a username column and someone references that as a foreign key and you try to update your username? Well, it's simple. Oracle just throws an error and doesn't let you update it. Not a problem. Nothing breaks, nothing explodes, it just doesn't run. The problem in this though is that now you can't change your username. Ah, This really depends on what your application does what its purpose is, but maybe not changing your username is a good thing. Some applications allow you to change your username, others don't. But if you're referencing that username as a foreign key, you want to design your app to where you cannot update your username because it will cause errors. For those who appreciate a visual, this is what it would look like. We have a username column that references the username column of the users table. Now, we have a user who tries to change their name. Now, some database systems have something called on update, and then we could say cascade, and this works very similar to the on delete. Essentially, if the person updates their username, the username in this table is also going to update. Unfortunately, Oracle does not have this. So there's not a real super easy way to do something like this in Oracle. That's why I'm stressing it so much that if you do this, you need to make it to where the username does not change. But just to tickle our brains a little bit, let's imagine Oracle does not care and doesn't throw any errors. Let's figure out what would happen. So in the projects table, I actually named this wrong here, the table that references the username is the creator table. The name actually doesn't matter, it doesn't have to match the column, so it's not a big deal. But let's say we have a creator, and his name is um, Seeker7. And that obviously has to match a user in the users table. But then Seeker7 is all like, you know what, this name's stupid. I'm gonna change it. And he changes his name to Seeker7. <laughs> but this one doesn't update. Now we have the issue that we have a project created by some mysterious user who doesn't exist because there is no such thing as a Cur 7 inside of the users table. Even worse, there might be another guy who realizes this Cur 7 is the creator of this group or this project. And then he updates his username to Cur 7 And now he has admin rights to do whatever he wants in this project. See the problem there? That's why a lot of people lean on the side of using surrogate primary keys and only referencing those with foreign keys. So if we wanted to do that, all we would need to do is have a user ID, and instead of having a creator, we'd have a creator ID. And instead of having a username here, we just have a number. And then this ccur7 with the ID of 7, he can update his name to ccar7, but his ID still stays the same, and this connection isn't broken anymore. That is something we can do in Oracle, and this is no longer in our imaginary world where Oracle doesn't care. This actually does work. That's why you often see something like creator ID referencing another column in another table. As a rule, primary keys should never change. So don't make a primary key that's going to change. The username, if you can change it, it would not be a good primary key. The user ID is perfect because it's just an arbitrary number that the database picks. It doesn't have any real world meaning. So primary keys never change. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Is it appropriate for foreign keys to change? I'll give you a second. The answer is yes. Why though? Well, in this situation we reference the user seven. If we were to change this, let's say to eight, the only thing now is it no longer points to this person, it points to someone else. So this is actually a good thing because it allows us to change 
things in our child table. So for example, if this person wanted to give off the uh, project to someone else, he might assign some other guy as the creator and then he could delete his account or whatever, you know? It, it's really flexible on how this applies, but yes, it is appropriate for foreign keys to change. But if it's talking about one person or one entity, then it should never change. So let's go back to seven, for example. In this situation, as long as we're talking about this person, this should never change. The only time this should change is if we change the entity we're talking about. So from what I've said, it seems like it's always the best idea to have foreign keys that reference an ID. But there's also a lot of downsides. If we have a projects user table, which just lists all the users in specific projects, it might look something like this. The way we would get this data is something simple like select everything asterisk from and then put the table name, which in this case would be like project users, for example. This is super easy to get this data. But if we get rid of the foreign keys that are nice and easy to read and replace them with IDs, this is going to say something like 5, 5, 12, 83, 72, 83. And we're no longer going to have this. That means what we're going to have to do is join these with the other tables and say, hmm, where do these go? And then we're going to have to create a really complex select that has joints. So that's the biggest consequence in my eyes. So the question is, which one do you choose? <laughs> choose wisely, my friend. The ultimate decision is up to you, but please choose wisely. Thanks, guys. Please stick around for the next video. Be sure to subscribe, and I will see you next time.